So hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Millie Marotta's Lion. So I'm going to be working hard on trying to get these done. Um, I was, I think I mentioned in one of my videos about my new planned schedule. So pretty much I'm planning like Mondays will either be speed colouring or past speed colouring. Uh, Tuesdays will be a colour along. Wednesdays will be either, once we catch up, it'll be the colour along from the Tuesday. But till then it'll be just past speed colourings. Uh, Thursday will be a real time colour along again. And Friday, once we catch up, will be basically uh, the colour along from the Thursday. But at the moment it's past colour alongs because I'm trying to catch up on those. And Saturday will be real time colour along. Sunday, same sort of thing. And then any other day will be book reviews or book hauls or any of that so they don't have a particular locked in schedule. Um, so you may notice here that there are a couple of parts of the line that are done in here that weren't done before. That is because I did start trying to record but unfortunately uh, things kind of, shall we say, messed up with the recording and so I don't particularly have those. Uh, so I'm going to basically start from where we were. Um, these ones here, this colour was done with... Ow! That bit my tongue. Ow! That hurt. Mmm! Ouch! This um, leaf here was done with a sepia, our mineral orange and our sand. And this one here was done with... Uh, sepia I think is it sepia or Tuscan red might just be done with yeah sepia Tuscan red burnt ochre and our sand so that's those two leaves if we come across another like that we will do it but I'm going to see if I can extend this one I want to start trying to get some pieces finished I'll see how far we get today depending um and yeah it'll be good so you may notice this one here that I've started on too it's just um, similar to what we've done in the past I didn't actually think to look back so I'm hoping I've done the right color tones with it it pretty much we've done our Tuscan red and now we're gonna come um, our Tuscan red PC 937 and now we're going to come in with our burnt ochre PC 943 and we want to colour that burnt ochre over those shadows leaving area for future colours um, as we can with the light sources. And I think it's the burnt ochre that we've used. I think. I hope. I can't fully remember but I hope it is. Sort of looks like it, so. Oh well, if it's not, then it's that now. Because <laughs> I, I probably should have gone back and watched over previous videos to find out the exact colour, which uh, I might even still do that, but. I've already started with the burnt ochre with this one up here so I guess we'll just keep it going with what, what we've started with now this time. I guess we will and then we want to add our light, light areas as well with our burnt ochre on top of that to allow for easier blending as well as also bringing our burnt ochre up along these top areas where our light would actually fall onto. And there's some areas even if they have a bit of the the reddish still left the Tuscan red still left on them, I'm kinda not necessarily covering it all because I want a bit a bit more of the light up in that spot. So I'm just going to try and go by patches or sections. So I'm going to try going to about 
this section up here and then if we've still got more time left I'll expand onto further sections and so on. Just because I really want to try and start getting Excuse me, some stuff finished, if I can. And lastly, now we're gonna come in with our sand PC940. And we wanna bring that over all the colors except for the spine area color. Because that is part of the lion's mane. It is. And I'm going to be working towards getting um, speed colorings up of the lion as well as time goes but I, I don't as I said in a previous video I think um, I don't want to upload the current part yet because it's like if I upload the current part then people still can't see all the previous parts if they want to use the speed coloring version instead to color it so it's like I don't feel there's much point to uploading the current parts till the previous parts are uh, done, shall we say. So, uh, just working out exactly I might start with this leaf. This one here is a little different to the others again because it doesn't have the the angled patterns along it. So got another different leaf as well. Interesting. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bring sepia into all the leaves that require sepia and then I will do it that way it might be quicker than doing one leaf at a time or a section of leaves at a time and then we can sort of work out where we go from there because I'm thinking that may be a little easier and hopefully we'll remember the right areas for the sepia. I don't know what leaf that one is in the little top bit there but yeah. We're just going to bring in a bit of sepia along these um, base bits of this area. It's going to be slightly different with this one to the others because of the position of it. But yeah, I hope you're enjoying this anyway. And if you do, please leave a like, subscribe and comment. I always love hearing from you. Also, 
Another thing I should tell you about is that I have changed my channel name. Uh, it's uh, now called Rebecca's Colouring Arts and Crafts, I think. And I changed that because, as someone pointed out, they kind of had no idea who I was. And the reason for that previously was because I didn't want my father to even know what I was doing or find out who I am, but I've realized I'm kind of sick of hiding. So I decided to change my channel name to, I guess, my real name. And so, hey, I'm Rebecca. <laughs> And yeah, welcome to my channel. And yeah, I've kind of decided that I don't want to hide anymore. So yeah, I hope you like the name change anyway and you'll stick around and keep joining me on our color alongs. So we're just bringing sepia into all these areas that require sepia although they'll be slightly different as we go depending on which colour is required in them. This one looks like it's slightly different too, but I guess I'll just go with similar to the other ones that are kind of similar to it. I think I will. Yeah, there's two of those um, ones without any particular leaf colours there. And I think I'm just going to do them the same as the other one sort of thing. So I think this one here I'm going to leave and I'm not going to put sepia in it. I'm not.
next one we're going to have it down the bottom here with the sepia So I think also with the Layla Julie part, um, I think that one may be finished next part looking at it. Uh, hopefully we'll see how it goes. But it'll be nice if I do manage to get it finished. At least that's my thoughts anyway. And you'll just notice we're just adjusting the position of our sepia depending on where the position of the plant sort of is depending on our light source which is coming down that way. It is. So the light position, the shadows and positions on the plants are changing as we go along. do it down this side but it's sort of just trying to have it a bit lighter as you notice some of these parts are areas where we have had colors go over them but we just work that in and these ones here I'm going to do more more along the base of it because the lights sort of on top of these areas that school if you hear the school announcements in the background apologies for that <laughs> I've just got the doors open on that today because it's not a, too bad a day um, yes that one does have sepia too at least I'm hoping they have sepia some of these ones that I put in because I know I tried to make some of them different uh, and I'm sort of not sure if some have sepia or not because it's been a little while since I did it and there's little patches of colour coming off too that I need to correct as well due to colour rub off as, as you all know that that issue but I'm hoping as I said in the past video that I may be able to look at if once my friend gets back from holidays we can make something to help with preventing color rub off on the images as I do them and then I can share that all with everyone else something that's already been invented but he reckoned that he could make it rather than me having to buy it so yeah and then I've got this little section here down along these areas. It kind of does look like they've got the sepia, it's just because of color, some of the colour rub off that needs fixing up. So I'm just quickly going to I kind of wish the colour didn't rub off so easily but with things but it's even worse with the polychromous I've noticed with the, the amount of pencil colour that rubs off so yeah still looks pretty detailed anyway but 
I don't necessarily want all the color rubbing off so I'm just quickly doing a few color corrections pretty much with some of these nose areas and that because the mineral orange color has been rubbing out of it the lighter colors particularly I've noticed particularly rub out but you don't always notice them till you start correcting the other colors so yeah we're just correcting some of these and hopefully my friend will be able to make that thing that we saw and we'll be able to and that'll help prevent this happening so much because it's kind of a pain having to recorrect and re-add the colors all the time because of them rubbing off but we do the best we can we do so we're going to continue with our sepia sorry i always get a little distracted by that when i notice colors coming off because i don't like it <laughs> And now, I think with this big area here, I think what I want to do is actually um, just lightly, I'm going to come in with a Faber-Castell 2B pencil and I just want to lightly, well as light as possible, draw little sections leading down to here because I want to do it in sections I'm thinking. rather than a whole big chunk I want to do like the little sections and the little details like the other the other parts of the image and we're all going to bring it down into that point down here and so hopefully you can see that and then what I want to do is I want to bring in my sepia PC948 so we're still continuing with our sepia and we also want to I'm just going to fill in this little hole here quickly with Tuscan Red PC937 and then our black PC935 because I don't want it there but we want to then can go back to continue with our sepia PC948 and we want to bring that down all these sort of back areas where we would have our our shadows kind of thing we want to bring that down our pencil lines too so we're creating like our own little fan sort of leaf area rather than one solid piece And that's that. Um, oops, I've missed one spot up here. So with this spot too, it's still sepia, but we're just bringing our tones down on the bottom edge, our sepia on, into the bottom edge of each of it because of the way our light source is coming. And yeah, um, so I'm going to do this section and then see if we have more time. I'm going to pause briefly and come back with our next colour just because the time and yeah, hopefully we'll have time to do more than this 
little section but I'm hoping maybe another three three or four parts we'll have it finished hopefully and yeah I'll see you shortly so hey everyone we're back so now we're going to come in with our Tuscan Red PC 937 and what we want to do is with these ones that don't have any colors yet we want to bring our Tuscan Red in along these ones even though they don't have the spikes I'm just going to do them similar to how how we've done um, the one just below it so I want to kind of have it similar uh, hoping I'm not putting too much red there but that bottom area would be more shadowed anyway and then we want to also bring in our Tuscan red along the top here Hang on, I just need to put the music back on quickly. <sighs> and then we want to just bring in our lighter areas along the top here because we want to leave a bit more of our white space along the top. I'm going to swap the position a bit again. Uh, hang on. No, that doesn't work that way there. So, oops, that one doesn't have Tuscan Red. Ah. Uh, what I'm going to do to uh, pretty much camouflage that mistake I'm going to blend it in with the Tuscan red and our black so that'll sort of cover up that mistake and make it look like it's still a leaf like it's not as good as it could be it doesn't totally fit in but it solves what happened and yeah because that spot isn't meant to be Tuscan red and I wasn't thinking clearly I'm still Stressing. I'm pretty, pretty certain that um, today the mailman, one of the mail, the parcel mailman threw my book. It didn't get damaged, but I still, I'm not really impressed about it. And yeah. So next we're gonna we're gonna continue with our Tuscan red, and yeah, that's kind of that. I'm not sure why, why exactly. I'm stressing or feeling nervous or what but yeah just keep going we've got to we just keep going But yeah, I wasn't really happy about that. But yeah. And then I'm just gonna bring the Tuscan Red into the areas that have, the ones that have Tuscan Red, and the ones that don't, we will leave and just hopefully we remember which ones don't have the Tuscan Red before we do it, or attempt to do it. Hopefully. Probably done a bit too much seep here in this spot, but what happens, happens.
to that. These ones here don't have Tuscan red, so you know to leave those. So a little sort of leafy looking one and these ones don't have Tuscan red. However, these ones here do. But yeah, I hope you're enjoying the more frequent videos anyway. I really hope you are. Because I really love doing this. That's kind of what I have going now since I was pretty much kicked out of my TAFE course due to my lack of social skills because they basically the teachers told me you're not going to pass with your social skills the way they are currently with my Asperger's and so you might as well just leave now because you're not going to pass so pretty much I've been pretty down in the dumps since then and it it has affected me quite a bit and it's almost like the review books and the colouring and stuff has kind of been my lifeline and what has kept me going. It is. And so this one, I could possibly come in with the light on this side of the leaf. But I'm kind of thinking I don't want to. I'm going to come down the spine on this side again as well and keep it similar to the other side. But yeah, ever since that happened, it's like, I've been quite upset about it and disappointed and feeling like I've done stuff wrong in that when I haven't necessarily done stuff wrong. But yeah, let's just say it wasn't pleasant to basically be kicked out because my social skills aren't good enough. It wasn't, it wasn't fun at all. And so my colouring stuff has been almost like a second chance on top of everything that's happened with being kicked out from TAFE and grandma passing away and everything like that and it means a lot to me and it is part of my dreams to go somewhere with my art and my colouring and YouTube and so I'm, I'm kind of more determined now than ever to try and go somewhere with it and try and achieve my dreams because life is too short and sometimes it's too hard but we just have to keep getting up and keep going if we want to go somewhere in our life and achieve our dreams we do
and I am going to bring in our light Tuscan red areas once we've got the this um, first bit of Tuscan red down there but yeah I guess it's just made me more determined than ever to try and work hard and achieve what I want with this channel it has And I don't know how many times I've wanted to give up as things just kept happening and happening and happening leading up to grandma's death and grandma passing, but I realized I couldn't do that. And this little section here, I've decided now I'm just going to color that with Tuscan red and with our black PC935 because, well, I don't want it there, pretty much. <laughs> And then we're just going to continue with our Tuscan Red PC 938 on these. 937, not 938. 938 is white. Duh. And that says I use the, I'm starting to use the white too much if I'm starting to remember the colour of that because I remember the black off by heart in my head too. It's PC 937, 935. The brain work but this seems to be going a lot quicker doing it this way which means we may get more done in this part which is awesome so now we've done our Tuscan red we want to come in with our burnt ochre PC943 we want to bring that over all those previous colours and our little light source area. Some of these ones here, these ones will be finished without orange I think. I just need to quickly look at the bottom. No, these ones are finished with orange and then sand. Um, it is this little one here that is finished with orange, those type. I'm pretty certain. Yeah. Yep, that's it. But we just keep going. These ones are sand here yeah, too. And we've just missed a little spot here where we want to try and correct quickly. It's just using the colours we've already used for these little section areas pretty much stem orange, the mineral orange or dusk and brown. I think the stem is or oh, burnt ochre. I'm just going to pause for a minute and check up on what the actual stem bit is for this one so I will be back shortly. So we're back. It 
turns out it was the burnt ochre for uh, this stem area so we're going to finish that bit with the burnt ochre and yeah then we want to bring our burnt ochre up into some of these little areas too We do want our burnt ochre in these leaves, so we bring our burnt ochre up into those. Change the position a bit. Move the camera slightly that way. There we go. Yep, you can see what's happening. That's good. I need to change the position again. Whoops, I just bent the corner of the page. <sighs> And we also want to finish this bit along this stem with our burnt ochre as well. And yep, this one has burnt ochre as well. And then we want to make sure that we have our little light area on top to allow for better blending.
So we're trying to leave space for our sand and orange in these ones, but we're not getting too much space left, I'm noticing. So just try and do the best we can with it. We are. Some of these may be finished on the orange even though I don't want to so there may be some may be slightly different to others other areas that I've done I guess we'll see just because the amount of space on them kind of thing and I haven't actually done any totally like that so I guess you could be doing it but I would like to try and get the sand in it if I can but we shall see how we go with the sand area we show.
then our last bit of ochre brown for this section. And our little light area on top to allow for better blending as well. And then I might, yeah, we've got time to do that. So next we want to come in with our mineral orange, but we only want to bring it in on the spots that um, actually contain mineral orange. So like this section here, and we're trying to leave space for a bit of our sand color as well. We are. And we want to bring that over all the colours again. And add mineral orange into these bits. And this spot here, I want to leave some room for sand, but I don't think there's going to be. So we're just going to finish this little section with our mineral orange, but we'll still bring our sand color over it when the time comes. There's just too little space to even consider adding the sand in that spot right here. There it is. So this one we want to try and leave a little space for our sand colour too if we can. Those, that one, this one here and this one doesn't have sand in it. It doesn't have the or mineral orange either, but this one here does. And this one's one that we want to finish with our mineral orange. I'm pretty certain. Pretty certain that is because it's got that little um, stem bit in the centre, like the others that have that stem bit. And we want to finish those ones with our mineral orange. Like this one here too is one that we finish with mineral orange. And then a 
last couple we want to try and leave some space for the sand in there as well we do Basically all I was doing there was just touching up an area again, so. I'm gonna, as I said, we try and leave some little areas for our sand color. much as possible. And then we want to come in with our sand PC940 and we want to bring that over all those colours that we've just done. and fill in our little areas that if we've managed to leave some areas, fill in those areas too. And the areas that were finished with the orange, we don't worry about putting the sand over those spots. We don't. But these, um, these areas that just had the burnt ochre and the sepia, we do want our sand in those areas. We do. Same for these ones with our little leafy section.
Ja. just fill in the rest of um, this sepia and burnt ochre leaf here too. We do. And we almost missed a couple. That looks much better than the solid solid area that it was, I, I feel, with the separating that big big pattern area. And yeah, so that's that section done. Um, I'm just gonna check. We may have enough time to do some more areas, but I'm going to have a look first and see. And if we do, we'll continue on. So either I'll see you shortly or I'll see you next time. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm just going to check how much time I've got left and if I have time to do some more or not, or I may just come in and do this black background area here, ready for, and then leave some more leaves for next time. And I may try and split the next part into two parts, try and get half and half done so that we're finishing it in less parts. I'll see, but I'm just going to check the time and I may see you shortly. I may see you next time. So yeah, <laughs> see you then. So hey everyone, we're back. Seems we still do have time to do a bit more. So I've decided what I'm basically going to do is do our black background here um, and then we can, then I think next time I'm going to try and split, even if it's longer parts, split it into half and half with what's left of the lion's mane and continue that from there. So yeah, um, we're pretty much going to just come in with our black Uniball Signo 0.7 millimeter gel pen to do our background. And we wanna bring that in over and around all these areas where we've started coloring, but we've sort of eased off the lion's color. We also wanna try and I guess trace around those areas so we don't get too many areas like I just messed up a bit there into our colored pieces of the lion's mane and then we just want to with small easy strokes we will just want to bring our black in here and I may just do part of this because this can take quite a while to do the black gel pen backgrounds. I may do part of this on camera and part off camera and we'll see. See how things go. But yeah, I'm just doing it in small sort of strokes to fill in the areas. And I find this way you don't end up with too many white areas in between it. kind of just bringing that along where our lion's mane or the sections in between our lion's mane also finish 
Ja. I'm just going to swap the side around. So as you know, so I'm kind of trying to highlight around each of these areas so I try not to go into them too much when I'm colouring with the black gel pen because I didn't do that with the first bit and it did so that's basically what I'm trying to do here is I guess fill in those areas a bit and also these little white sections along the top here I'm just going to cover those in because I was trying not to go over the page too much. And I find it's better to try and keep going in the same direction um, once you've started the, the gel pen marks. So I'm going to keep going in up and down sort of direction. I am, because otherwise I find it sometimes looks a bit weird. I'm just going to try drawing a, a line along the top of this page so I hopefully don't go over. I'm trying not to because sometimes the black gel pen, when it's on the back, it does rub off on the other page even if it's set the page behind. I've noticed when I'm using this piece of card because I pretty much use it for everything and I've got gotten black gel pen on the card in the past and it does sometimes rub off on the back image like I don't know that you can see it but there's all pencil color rubbed off on the back of this image at the moment um, I'm guessing it's just pencil shavings from from the line from what I've been coloring I'm assuming so yeah but we're just gonna keep going along our line here Just filling in these areas in between the main first and I'll probably do the the main white section off camera I'm thinking just because at the time it usually takes to do even just a plain black background like this with the gel pen to get it looking how I like
we'll see I may do parts of this um, white bit on this whole white section on camera I will just I'll see what I decide as I go I'm sort of thinking I might now because I forgot that the lines meant that came out further than the pattern area where I was doing it so might as well do each part as we go I'm just slightly extending the streak marks here just trying to um, fill in the angle area but I normally try not to do that too much because of the you tend to get more white streaks and stuff when you do that and why I choose the Uniball Signo gel pens is because I find the ink just seems to be very smooth and consistent I yes it does use up a lot of the pen but at the same time it is a very consistent pen unlike some of the others that I've tried and each pen seems to be the same color with the ink in that as well so yeah trying to snugly fit our card into that spine as we work over that way so I'm going to start down at this area down here I'm going to work our way across as far as possible And I thought that might be where I'd end it, so. So we're ending it fairly close to the spine, but there's still a little bit of a white gap in between there. There it is. And then we just keep working our way backwards and forwards across the page. Just moving our pen up as we go. And just doing it in little streaks and some of these areas you might have to just sort of change the position of your pen just to get the it into the same spot where you want it to go each time as it goes into that spine it sort of dip, dips down it does And I'm just quickly going to do all the way up this area if I can because it's quite awkward in this spot. So I just want to try and get it done because I'm not getting it totally even because of the awkwardness of where the spine's dim dipping. Plus the fact the cardboard can't totally get into that spot so it's kind of 
causing it to dip more but the cardboard I find I use because it makes it uh, less bulgy when the when the paper sort of bulges out behind on the image and I'm going to have to go and erase the the back pencil colours which I think are basically like shavings that have come off as I've been colouring that are colouring or uh, there's something on there that are pretty much staining the the back of this page it looks like it's just pencil shavings that have come off as I've been colouring due to I guess partly just colouring the pencil on but also I think partly because of the the fact that some pencil colour has been rubbing off as we've gone and that pencil colour sometimes transfers or but I'd say it's more likely as we've been colouring there's been an excess amount of pencil colour come off and when I've brushed it off it's gone underneath the page and as a result has I guess pretty much um, rubbed onto that back back page as I've been colouring and it looks like a lot of it is the Tuscan red like I don't know that you were able to see that when I showed it but yeah so that, that's kind of the thing like with the polychromos I've noticed the colour seems to rub off a lot easier when your hand's colouring when your hand's rubbing on it but yet it doesn't seem to get that um, a heap of that excess pencil lead as you're using the pencil yet the Prismacolor gets a heap of that excess lead as you're using the pencil but then it doesn't rub off quite as much and quite as easily when your hand is resting on the page so it's kind of interesting noticing that difference I guess in them It is, it's really interesting. So I think what I'm going to do with this black background is just show you the section on how I do it and then um, then you can sort of continue it. Like I'll keep continuing till the time runs out on this section but then after that I'll probably just finish it off camera and basically it'll this pretty much shows you how how I do it anyway how I do the background or the black background I may even finish it after we finish this section but it's still so we're back uh, unfortunately the battery died <laughs> um, I can't remember exactly what I was talking about but yeah I was talking saying partly I think with the rest of the line I'm going to try and split that into two longer parts for the future and um, I'll see if I keep going with the black for this whole part or whether I go and end it and do part of the black off camera I'm still deciding um, I guess I'll work it out I will. I will work it out. And yeah, we're just basically just doing small little strokes as we do this. I'm sort of tossing up whether I should keep going with the black background so you can all see how I do the full thing 
but pretty much how we're doing it is just tracing around the shape of our line and then just using small strokes to fill in areas around those spots. We are, and you may, depending, need more than one Uniball Signo gel pen. It just depends on how much ink is left in it. Like mine didn't have a full amount of ink because I've been using it for something else. But yeah. this down here a bit. As you'll see we're just tracing along those lines. just using our little streaks to fill those areas out. But yeah, I think I'm definitely going to try and finish the next parts of this line in two parts, um, even if that means longer parts, because I really want to try getting some stuff finished. And I think, I think once this is done, I might go on to um, lay the Julius the flower year, because I think after I do that part, I think that is then finished. If I'm thinking correctly with the amount I have left on it which will be awesome but yeah so I'm hoping that I can get some stuff finished and then I want to bring back like um, the galaxy background tutorial but I want to bring back that full image and um, color that and I also want thinking um, I've had requests for doing some more from Magical Jungle by Joanna Basford, so I'm going to do that. I'm also thinking maybe finding another Millie Marotta piece to do once we've finished Medusa and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I've got a few little things that I'm thinking of, but we've got to start finishing up some pieces before we go to our new pieces or new, new colour alongs and that sort of thing. And yeah, I'm going to be working on doing at least three real-time tutorials a week. So, rotating between them, of course. So you should see them, we should see them finish soon, hopefully. Or something starting to finish soon. And some new things being started. Which would be awesome. And I think once I've done this little part, I think I'm probably going to finish the rest of this black background off camera because I think I've given you a pretty good idea how I'm doing it now and I really hope you're enjoying this I do because I am
I'm just trying to keep it as straight down that area where we've ended at the spine as possible to try and keep it evenish, I guess you could say. It actually looks like it has gone a bit further down than I realised. So it's actually pretty close to the spine but don't feel obliged to try and take it that close. It is, it's actually really close to the spine. But yeah, you don't have to take it quite that close if you don't feel confident doing that. I am a little worried I could get ink over on the other page there with how close it was. But yeah, I just try to take it little strokes at a time and only take it to where I feel comfortable. I do. And yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that with a lion for now. Um, and I will do the rest of the, the black background off camera. I really hope you have enjoyed this part. If you have, please leave a like, subscribe and comment. And I will see you next time. I'm loving how it's coming out anyway. So yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.